This video is about vibrato. When best to start with vibrato? What are the best exercises? How is the movement? And how to vibrate slow and fast? And also some ideas you shouldn't follow. So first, when is the best time to start vibrato? Condition is our fingers stretch automatically in tune to the next notes and the spacing is safe. They also must feel strong enough to play by themselves that they don't contract. I start with my students after position shifts come naturally. What is the movement of the vibrato? Well, there are different thoughts about it and some be beginners start vibrating with the fingers and activate them, but that doesn't work. We don't do it with the wrist either, like violinists do it. It doesn't work on the cello. How we do it is we move the whole lower arm. And the movement is very similar. I take here a bottle, like shaking a baby bottle. So the movement goes up and down and and that's how virtually all cellists vibrate. The wrist remains straight, so be careful that we don't do anything with the wrist because uh, it gets awkward and the arm is not free. In school I used to practice with my fingers on the right arm and it's somehow a very comfortable way to do the right movement. When we do vibrato, in difference to how we learned keeping all the fingers down, we use only single finger play. Like if you would vibrate with four fingers, then the fingers keep the whole arm stiff, it can't vibrate. So if you vibrate one, it's only one, three, it's only three, four, only four. If the fourth finger is a bit weak, we might support it with a three. And it's okay, and I've seen very good cellists doing that. I also allow to touch the next string. It's more relaxing for the hand, and we have the hand as far back as possible. Like we don't lift it up, and it doesn't help. You might be worried to touch the next string, but you don't need to. And I just demonstrated if, if I touch the next string, want to play a double stop, I push it here a little bit in, and that's enough, because only the first little bit of the finger has to be steeper, not the whole arm. And usually we just let it touch, and it's fine. The use of the thumb is different too. We have learned that the thumb is about underneath the second finger. Well, in vibrato that doesn't work very well. For example, with the four, many people take even the thumb off. And I move my thumb wherever it's comfortable. Under the three, a bit more on the three, four is about the same position. Under one, I take it under the one, it will be extend back, like they would sound like this, and it's not very nice. And we just take the thumb back, we get a nice vibrato. Some cello teachers say, oh, you can't do that. But I just show here a picture of cellist Rostropovich, he's the Russian cellist. And if you have a look, he does exactly that. He's in the first half position, he takes the arm back, and it's just much easier and it sounds better. And in the end, a good technique is what sounds good, what's easy, we don't get tired. That's all what there is to it. The great violinist Isaac Stern said once to vibrate always a bit less than we could, underdoing it, so we always could do more. I can only emphasize this. If we try hard, it sounds like trying hard vibrato, and it's not nice music. Underdoing frees up the hand, and the vibrato can move freely in larger movements, whereas pushing it tenses up the muscles and the vibrato remains little and fast. When I followed this instruction for the first time, 
I thought, oh, this movement is too small. Because it was effortless. Then I looked at my hand and the movement was larger. I was very amazed. And it sounded larger, you could hear it better. The effortlessness loosened the finger so much that with less effort, effort the movement was actually bigger. Now we're coming to how to practice vibrato, because we have to practice it. I found with students the best way is to choose a scale, an easy scale, counting three beats, quite slow beats, and vibrate only on the second beat. Like... That ensures that we have the intonation right and that we stop ready for the next finger to get the intonation again right, feel secure, and the vibrato doesn't get tense. I found when students start straight away to vibrate, they often lose the spot as well, and it's very normal to do it. Just don't start vibrato straight away. You can learn that later. If later you want to learn vibrato like to have it seamless, just uh, go a little bit back with the fingers which you play next and drop it down with a tiny bit, I would not call it a hammer, but a drop. And this relaxes the hand. In music pieces I suggest to start with to select just a few longer notes which you can play on a comfortable finger. Because it should sound natural and it should not sound like a workout where we train vibrato. For example, if you do the start of the Breval Sonata. Why with this one second finger makes a lot of a difference. And that's a comfortable way to start. Now to the arm position. Like I mentioned before, the arm should be low and the fingers can touch the other string. Like on the A string, the arm hangs virtually down. And then when we come to the next string to ensure that the wrist is straight, the arm moves gradually up. Well, I'm often asked, how do you change speed? What makes a speed? Why does it shiver? How can I do slow vibrato? The speed of the vibrato is determined with the tension in the upper arm and the biceps. Like if we tense up the arm, it gets fast. If we relax it, it is slow. Now a short comment to some wrong ideas. Many schools teach that we have to bring the arm up. And that as well, the hand, the thumb has to come out, the hand has to be up. And often it's used in orange to demonstrate how you play. And I hold the hand like this. And I can only warn about that. Like if we stretch the hand and fold it, try to fold it like this, we can't extend it. It's here locked in. And these knuckles need to be straight, and otherwise we can't extend that it's in tune. So the whole orange idea, just forget it. And with vibrato, of course, we can vibrate like this, and it sounds exactly like that. The difference is, we can't reach the other string, it's out of reach. So, in order to go on with the piece, we need to give up vibrato until we come to the next note. You're welcome to try it but it's very awkward. My first teacher said, you have to vibrate like this, and he demonstrated it, it sounded very nice. And in a music piece, I watched him, I never said anything, he never did it, because it was just very awkward. Another idea which I heard is, that a slow vibrato, you need to spread your fingers, like a ballerina, and then you put your fingers together, and it's faster. But it's not true either. You, like if you stretch very tense, of course it gets fast because your arm is tense. So, so you need to relax 
and stretch relaxed in order to vibrate slow. Whereas when you have your fingers together, if you tighten up, it's fast, if you do it relaxed, it is slow. And that's all what there is about. It has nothing to do with what you do with your fingers. It has to do with your arm. Well, I wish that it helped you and uh, hope you will get a nice song.